Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you guys the basics of DaVinci Resolve. So you guys loved my last video, it got a ton of views. But some of you guys thought what I was doing was really cool, but really complicated. So I'm going to be showing you guys the basics and a little bit of the advanced stuff in DaVinci Resolve. So first things first, to download DaVinci Resolve, you're going to have to go to their website right here, blackmagicdesign.com, and you want to scroll down, hit the download button. DaVinci Resolve has two different versions. The first version is the free version, and the second version is the studio version. Now the studio version costs like I think $300 while the free version is completely free. So to download you just basically choose your operating system. So I have Windows obviously. So as soon as you click that this window is going to show up and basically in here you can type your details and then after you download it this is going to install. So then you would right click it and then hit extract and then you open the extracted folder and then you run this and then you would basically just follow the on-screen instructions and then after that you'll have DaVinci Resolve. So next you're going to open up DaVinci Resolve. To start another project, just hit new project and then you can name your project here. And after you named it, you just hit create. And now you're in the main DaVinci Resolve interface. So to import your clips, what you got to do is go up here to file, import, and then media. You can do the same by just right clicking in here and then clicking import media. And then after you import your clip, this one is going to pop up, hit change, and then you'll have your video in there. Now let's say you want some background music. You right click it again, hit import media, you go to your music file. You can import multiple clips at once too, which is pretty helpful. So now that you've got your music, you're just going to hit open, and then it's going to show up in your media pool. Now you may be wondering, what are these seven tabs at the bottom? So this is the media page where you would basically import all your clips. The next page is the cut page where you basically cut things up and then just make basic edits and stuff like that. And the cut page is actually one of the newer pages and has been getting a lot more features ever since it was added back in late 2019. The next page is called the edit page. Now if you use things like Premiere Pro, this is obviously going to be a lot more familiar to you. And the edit page is going to be the, like the closest to Premiere, which is what some of you guys are used to. The next page over is the fusion page, which is where it's spend the bulk of my time in my previous video. And this page is where you do your compositing, motion graphics, and visual effects. And it is very, very feature packed. It's got a ton of effects and stuff like that. The next page over is the color page, where you would color grade your video. And there is a ton of things that you can do in here. In fact, DaVinci Resolve actually started off as a color grading program and then just expanded into video editing, which is pretty cool. Look at that graph. Look how fancy that graph is. Now the next page over is Fairlight, which is where you would edit your audio to where it sounds good. So there's all of these audio effects in here. And what's cool about DaVinci Resolve is that they actually have their own sound library that you can download. So it says download DaVinci Resolve's free sound library, where basically you would have lots of sound effects used in the background of your videos to make them more cinematic. And the last page over is the deliver page, where you would export your video and make it into like a finished file. So you would name your file, you would set the location, and then you'd basically tweak all your settings over here, add to render queue, render all, and then it's just going to start rendering the finished video. So let's start in the cut page. So scrubbing in DaVinci Resolve is pretty nice, especially in the cut page, because when you scrub, you can actually hear the audio of the clip. Hey guys. And that's nice because it lets you know exactly when to make an edit. Hey guys, so today I'm going to... And I made a little mistake in there, so to make a cut, you gotta select the clip, hit the scissors icon that's right here, and then hit backspace, and then you just remove that portion of the clip. So this type of cutting and splitting is kind of hard because you have to move your mouse all the way over here, and you have to move it all the way over here to cut, and then you need to move it here, select here, cut, and then hit backspace. But there is a better way to do it, and that is with configuring your keyboard shortcuts. So to configure your keyboard shortcuts, what you're gonna do is go up to here to make yourself and then keyboard customization. And then this one is going to show up where you can basically configure your keyboard shortcuts. So my keyboard shortcuts is S for splitting and E for deleting. Or if you're coming from a different video editor, you would come up here and then you can see these different video editors right here and then you can select the hockey layout that you're used to. Now let's say you want to add text to the video. Well, you're going to go up here to titles and then you will see all of these text presets that are in here. The only two that I use is this text and text plus one. So this normal text one has less features. It's basically suitable for the beginner video editor. And text plus has a lot more features. You will notice that there are these six tabs up here in this text plus layer, which allows you to basically customize the text to exactly how you want it. This is a video. And then you can just select the font that you use. So the font that I use all the time in my videos is the November font. And then you would size your text. Maybe put it in a position. If you want a black outline on your text, you can just turn up the stroke color and I have an outline on your text. If you want a drop shadow you can turn it on by changing the offset values. You can change the opacity and the blur. 
Now the tracking right here is actually the space in between the letters, and then this background part right here allows you to add a background to your text. If you want to add and customize an image, what you gotta do is just take your image, drag it down into the timeline, you can make it so it only lasts for a few seconds. You can just select the clip, grab the end handle, and then just pull it in, drag it to be two seconds. And now you have an image that shows up for two seconds. So to customize it, you gotta select this clip, and then you're gonna go to the inspector. This is where you can size and customize your image. Let's see, I just, I just want it up there, like that. And now a logo is up there for two seconds. If you wanna rotate it, you got the rotation right here. And then cropping is if you only want part of the image to show up, you can basically just crop it like this. You can do the same with the videos as well. You can crop a video to where part of the video to show up. So this basically just crops the dimensions of the video and then if you want to zoom in to that part of the video you can do that. Now if you want the cropping to be retained then you can just check this and now the cropping is going to stay even when you zoom in. So now you may notice that when it reaches the end of the two second mark you can see that the image just disappears. So I'm going to scroll down to the push transition. I'm basically just going to click and drag it onto the image right here and then I'm just going to shorten it to like maybe 10 frames and then when I hit play it's going to fly out that way now, I don't want it to fly out that way I want it to fly out the other I want it to fly uh, I want it to fly out the other way so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the transition and then you can see the transitions right here and then this preset right here you can just set the preset to push right just like in that direction and another thing that I like to use is this ease setting right here. So, since this transition is flying out, I want it to ease in, so basically have the animation start slow and then speed up. So now I'm going to be teaching you guys about adjustment clips and fusion compositions. So an adjustment clip is exactly like an adjustment layer in Premiere Pro and After Effects. So if you drag down an adjustment clip, nothing will happen because they haven't added anything to this adjustment clip. So any effect or anything you do to this adjustment clip will affect all of the layers below it. So if I select this adjustment clip and I move the position, you can see it actually moves everything with it. Sort of like a transform node in fusion. Wait, that's not very helpful, is it? So if you want to add a glitch effect over everything, you can just type glitch, and then digital glitch, and then the glitch effect will have been added over everything, including this logo here. And adjusted clips are pretty helpful if you want to add an effect to every clip on the timeline underneath it without having to nest all the clips. But what if you do want to nest all the clips? So how nesting works is it basically just takes all of the clips that you selected and forces it all into one layer that you can work with as if you rendered out the clip. To nest all the clips, you just gotta select the clips that you want to nest together, and then you right click, and then you hit new compound clip, which is basically DaVinci Resolve's equivalent of nesting. So you can just, you can name the compound clip, I'm just gonna hit create, and now it's all in one clip right here. So something really cool that you can do in DaVinci Resolve is you see this button right here, you can actually enable this button, so now you can actually see all of the timelines that you're working on. And if you want to see all the clips inside this compound clip, you just gotta right click on it, hit open in timeline and then another timeline is going to be opened where basically you can edit the compound clip which is pretty dang cool and then if you want to close it you can just hit the x there so now i'm going to be showing you fusion compositions Now, fusion compositions are kind of the hardest to understand, so I'm going to explain it as best as I can. So, a fusion composition is basically just an empty canvas where you can basically create whatever you want in the fusion composition. So, to customize the fusion composition, what you got to do is just click on the fusion composition, go to the fusion page, and you can see it's an empty canvas. All that's here is a media out. Let's say I want to make a fusion composition with, with a little bit of text and a background with a custom shape. Well, I can go to the fusion tab, and the very first step for every single fusion composition that you create is drag down a background node, connect it to the media out, and then make the background node transparent. And then the fusion composition is now completely transparent. So I'm going to go back into Fusion and drag down another background node. If you're coming from a different video editing software, such as like After Effects, a background node is practically the same as a solid layer. So to demonstrate, I'm going to make the background node a different color. To make it a different color, you're going to select the background node, go up here to Inspector, and then where it says Color, you can just set the color, and I'm going to set it to Light Blue. And then to add a shape in general to this background node, I'm just going to go in up here to one of these four choices, and one of these four choices is going to help you create any type of mask. So if I wanted to turn into 
rectangle, then I can just drag this down here and then connect the rectangle node to the effect mask input of the background node. And now it's a rectangle. And then I can control the rectangle to the shape that I want it. So I can give it a corner radius. I can rotate it. I'm going to set the corner radius to a very small amount like that much. Let's say I want it to fill in outside of the mask instead of inside of it. I can just hit invert and now it's filling it in outside of the mask. So what if I want this to be an outline instead of being completely filled in? Well, what you gotta do is just uncheck solid and then turn up the border width. So to add text, what you gotta do is you see the text plus here, you basically just click and drag and then you move it to right here and there's your text right there. And now you can just say whatever you want to say. And now I'm gonna make it my font, size it up a bit. Now something that's really important for Fusion is knowing how a merge node even works. So this right here is a merge node. All the triangles here are all inputs and the boxes are all outputs. Anything you put in this foreground input is going to be above anything you put in this background input. And then the blue triangle is the effect mask. And the effect mask only works on the foreground and not on the background. Now this node based system is similar to just like a flowchart. Everything in between can be considered as layers. So imagine in After Effects you have a solid layer that you apply a mask to. That's basically what this is. And then you just add some text and it actually matters where you put another node. So this right here is a transform node. And obviously since all of this is input it into the transform node, this transform node can move only this stuff and all this other stuff is completely unaffected. You can see when I move it, it only moves the blue part and not the text. But if I move the transform node to over here, the input of the transform node is going to be connected to all of this stuff. And then when I move the transform node, it affects everything. So using this transform node, I'm going to size it down and then I'm going to move it into the corner like this. And then boom, when I return to the cut page, you can see it's actually been moved down to the corner. So to create an out animation using the transform node, it's actually about the same as in the cut page. And to animate it out, I'm going to add a keyframe on center. And then I'm going to go to where I want my animation to stop. And then I'm going to add another keyframe and then drag the X value this way. So now it moves out like that. And then if you want to render it out, you just go to the deliver page, hit YouTube 1080p, which basically simplifies all the export options, and then you can just dial in your settings there. Now the main settings that you're going to have to dial in is just the resolution and the frame rate. So the higher the frame rate, the smoother the video is going to look, and the higher resolution, the better quality the video is going to look. And then you can just name your file, hit add to render queue, and then just hit render one. And then it's going to take a moment, but once it's done rendering, you will have the finished product. Alright, so I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. If you loved it, please subscribe. If you would like a more advanced tutorial, then I would recommend you would check out this video up here. And I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Bye!